Hello, Renee Flamond here, and Minnie. Look at her butt, look how round it is. I can't take it. I can't, I can't take it, I can't take it. Um, this topic is of particular interest of me because it's one of the last things that I learned. So my desire here in making this video is to snap those out of it who were asleep like I was for the latter year of the post breakup contact back and forthness that was going on. Every time I got any kind of contact from my narcissist, and you might be going through this where you've, you're trying to leave, you just broke up, they're contacting you. It might be six months, a year ago that you left them and they're trying to contact you. I, for a very long time, and I think self-preservation kicks in and, and makes us think this way, but I, for a very long time, thought, he misses me. He regrets leaving me. He regrets leaving this. You, you try to think of yourself as all this fabulousness, right? It's self-preservation. You want to know that you won him. You won him choosing you over somebody else. You are in the lead. You count. You mattered to them. So with all of those things swirling around in our brain, even if we're not conscious of those, it's very natural I'm telling you, right up until the last time I spoke with him. It's very natural to think, he misses me. He wants to talk to me. He's wanting to get back. He's wanting to connect with me. He needs my friendship. He wants to hear my voice. He needs comforting, and I provide that for him. None of those are true. None of them. None of them. And they'll say all of them. I love you. It's only you. Nobody else can compare to you. I want to come home. I want to be back to get. I will do anything. You know, all of this. The danger in existing, it's, it's twofold. Existing within self-preservation of thinking that way is protecting our feelings from the hurt that I'm about to share with you is the real reason they're calling you. It also allows us for a little bit to feel okay. It puts a band-aid on what the ugly truth may be, right? And that's where the self-preservation comes in, I think. You say to yourself, you sell it to yourself. Well, he must really miss me. Did you hear that message? Or... Let me tell you what's actually going on. And I am telling you, I learned this. This is one of the last things I learned. I never really got it up until very recently in the grand scheme of things. When they are reaching out to you, what's happening <laughs> is they need a hit of narcissistic supply. And they are used to you providing that for them in one way or another, okay? If you answer the phone and have a conversation with them, that's a hit. If they talk to you like a friend and they're having problems with a new relationship and you're helping their feelings and telling them they're wonderful, that's a hit. If they are trying to tell you that they want to get back together with you, that certainly is a hit. Pardon me. It's not very ladylike. But my nose, um, I have a fan on me, so it's making the dust, I think. I think that when it comes to you realizing the quite the real reasons why they're calling you will help you go forward to not answer them. Because it's very hard not to answer them. I went through it for a year, the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth blocking, unblocking, all of this business, until it occurred to me, and then I never wanted to talk to him again, that I was just a hit of narcissistic supply. Now, why at this point are they needing that from you? Well, they're being ignored elsewhere. They're in a fight elsewhere with somebody else. 
even at the moment that they're contacting you, they could be carrying on a conversation with the person they're fighting with and trying to get you to make them feel better at the same time. Like they're still trying to get with the person they're with now, the new supply, but they're reaching out to you because they're bruised. Their ego is bruised. It needs a lift. And you've been a dependable source, haven't you? I was. I was a dependable source of supply. Even once he had a new supply, I would be there to listen, to laugh, to make fun of him. I would make fun of him to his face. You're pathetic, I'd say. Get your life together. Didn't matter. I was giving him attention. I was giving him attention. If they're alone for a minute, one minute, if it's a slow night on Narcissist Street, they're going to reach out. Because they need attention. They need pampering. They need something. What it occurred to me, and again, it was I cannot stress how last I learned this. It really does have zero to do with us. Specifically, personally, us. I'm really sorry. Nothing to do with us. They don't miss us. And, you know, I watched videos on this when I was being contacted with him, by him. And I didn't hear it. I didn't get it. It didn't sink in. But they are right. How did I come to this conclusion? Well, I lived it and I saw it. I saw it. If somebody really misses you and you're in a non-disordered relationship and you had a healthy breakup, and somebody's going through something and they realize, nope, I really want you. Well, they're going to express that to you repeatedly, hopefully in a healthy way, where you finally see what they're saying, you have a meeting of the minds, and maybe you go forward and you try again. The narcissist, the second you respond, they'll give you a day, two days, maybe they needed from you, and then they're going to either not talk to you anymore, they got what they needed, they're going to move back to that person, move on with another person. They just needed a hit. What does a hit indicate? It's quick, right? Quick. They need a hit. So if you provide that for them and then they move on, don't do that. Don't give them fuel. Don't give them fuel. They're doing, when they reach out, this is how I picture it. They're doing like a test run on their bench. You know, they call they call us bench warmers once we're old supply. Because they don't, my narcissist even told me, I don't lose anyone's number. I'm friends with everybody. I've had the same number 30 years. His phone would ring from old numbers and he's like, I don't, I never. They keep a bench of people. And we're called bench warmers like in a sport. I feel like. They're giving it a test run. Like, they're, like, don't jump right in because they have, they want some reaction from someone. How do they say it's like, um, like a fisherman? They throw the words ugly. Chum, chum, is that the word? They throw chum in the water. And then it's a gross word because I think it's like, chum is like gross. It's like, I don't even want to think about what it is. But they throw it in the water and then the big fish come. I think that's what they're doing when they reach out almost every time. They have a list maybe of 10 people, 20 people, 15 people, 8 people, 2 people, whatever it is. And they throw out chums. So they're going to send, they may even have sent the same message to you and 10 other people. I don't want to be the one to respond. Oh, heck no. Once I figure that out, no way am I going to be the one to fall for that. Let the other seven people fall for that and be there for him. I'm not being the fuel for anybody's hit that they need for a millisecond. I'm interested in somebody who wants to be with me. Me, Renee Flamond. Not me as supply, not because I'm a good ear, a good listener, a good caretaker. I'll make you feel like a king for a minute. Sure I will, but not anymore. Once I caught on. Once you catch on to that, you don't want to talk to them. You don't want to contact them back because you don't want to be that for them. It became so clear, and I wish I knew it a year and a half ago. I really wish I did because now I look and I get so 
Ugh, I could just shake myself of a year ago when they would he would call and I'd be like, I wouldn't get mushy like, oh, he misses me. But I did think that. Absolutely. I was like, okay, well, he went a month and now he's missing me because I was phenomenal. And you should think the same about yourself if you knew that you were good to that person. And I'm thinking, I was phenomenal. It doesn't matter how I was. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with me. He needed a hit of supply from somebody somewhere. He's in a desperate state. And usually every time that he talked to me, it was a desperate state. Got into a fight with someone. He's uh, feeling lonely. He's hating his life. He's miserable. He made a regretful choice by leaving me. Needs to come back here. And I was listening to all of it in the beginning. I was. I was listening to all of it. And I was thinking, um, I was feeling um, validated, I guess. And I wanted to feel validated. Because when you leave these people, you're so broken. And so you feel like nothing. So when they come back at you, and it gives you some sense of, maybe I did mean something. You want to grab onto that, right? You want to grab onto that. And then it, that makes you want to respond to them because you want to not respond in kind necessarily. I didn't say I love you too, I miss you too. Those words were gone from my vocabulary. But I would approach it like, so hi, what's up? You sound a little upset. Is everything all right? But that's giving him supply. I answered him. I'm being friendly. We would laugh. He'd come through town, he'd come in for coffee. Now he's not welcome here anymore. That decision was made about six months ago. No, no, no. Those days are over. He's not welcome here anymore. And um, once I realized that when they're reaching out, it is only to fuel their own tank that they need filled with some kind of compliments or or making them feel better in some way, I realize I don't want to do that for somebody. You don't want to do that for somebody. Don't let yourself be that person for them. Let them find it somewhere else. And you know, it's extremely disheartening to grasp that. And I know that. And I think that's why I put off grasping it for a long, long time. Because I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe that I meant nothing. And it takes you a while to wrap your brain around that. But watch the way they're behaving. They're off being with other people. If I meant something, he wouldn't have been doing any of the things A to Z that he did. It was so in front of me the whole time. And I didn't see it. I don't think I wanted to see it. And now I want to see it. I'm anxious to see it that way. Seeing it that way gives me strength. It makes me look at him and be like, he's just sleazy. Ew. I'm not going to entertain somebody like that. Oh, God, no. And please think of yourself as 8,000 times better than a person like that. And I know it's hard. I'm so, so sorry. I really, really am. It's hard to think of that. But I promise you it's true. And I've put it to the test with him, which is how I learned it was true. I said many different things and tried many different tactics and don't answer, answer, everything in between. I'm telling you, if you were to ignore them, eventually they do go away. And now a lot of the tapes tell you, oh no, they'll never quite always go away. They could, you know, reach back out to you in five years, 10 years. That's true. You're forever on their bench. They'll forever look at it that way. Your number is in their phone, and they think that at any point... Now, he'd have to really forget some horrible things I've told him, but he continues to do it. There was a message in blocked messages last week. So he continues, after all these months, to forget about all the bad things and insults I've paid back to him, because I told him exactly what I thought of him. It wasn't pretty. Not screaming, just very calmly. Once we were broken up, I was like, you know, this is, yeah, it was ugly. They forget about that. You're on the bench. Your number's in their phone. They come upon a day where they're feeling just that lonely and no one's responding. And they, oh, I know who I'll call. 
Renee's really reliable. She won't, she won't say no to me. Yes, she will once you figured out what you're doing. Yes, she will. They don't need me. He doesn't need me. They don't need us. They don't miss us. It's not us. You follow what I'm saying? So pay attention to that. And I'm about to make a video on why you shouldn't get back to them. 